There are many mods available for Fallout New Vegas. Some fix small things you'd probably never notice. Some add new weapons or textures, new characters or new quests. But then there are the mods that add it all, effectively becoming a new DLC for Fallout New Vegas. Can you beat Fallout The Frontier without taking any damage? Before downloading the mod, I made sure to do no research of any kind, just like with parallel parking. I wanted to go in blind, with no idea of what to do or how to do it. The only thing I did do was look up the recommended level to start the mod, which happens to be level 11. A few places said 20, but 11 seemed like a good option too. Like with the other DLCs I made videos in millennia ago, I wanted a well-rounded character. I didn't want to be too good at any one particular thing, so I'm borderline bad at everything and good at almost nothing. I'm perfect. I did pick useful tag skills, perks, and traits to give myself some small help along the way. To go back to the parking analogy, at the very least, I've now got my hands on the wheel, even if I'm still blindfolded. I picked guns, speech, and barter as my skills, and trigger discipline and skilled as my traits. They're the failsafe options to go with if you're never sure what to expect. Then I screamed for 11 straight minutes to level myself up about 11 times to get to the right level to start the DLC. As I leveled up, I distributed my points amongst all skills to even them out and chose Rapid Reload, Educated, Fortune Finder, Jaunty Saunters a perk that comes with the mod that's extraordinarily useful as a perk you take right off the button, looted a few things, and went outside where I was greeted with an option to skip right to level 12 to begin the mod. That f with my pre-game f**kery, and it's too early into the video to get blasted by two nonsense hoses at the same time. Went back in time, didn't give myself the levels early, let the mod do it, and was almost exactly where I was the first time as far as skill points go, but could only choose from a selection of pre-chosen perks, of which I knew what none of them were, which is unfortunate. Most skills got to 37 or 40. I didn't put any points into medicine or survival, because this is my world, you're just an observer in it. At some point, I set my max health to 1, so that any damage of any kind killed me. Waited an hour, Private John invited me on an expedition to hell, and I traveled to the NCR Frontier Children Campground to sign up for a tour of duty. I've got an arm like you wouldn't believe, gonna take some heads off in dodgeball later. Despite having woken up just about 7 minutes ago, the sergeant is already well aware of my legendary exploits, and I spoke to Gray about what goes on in the frontier. It's an easy mission. Get pumped full of patriotic propaganda, go find yourself a creative way to get PTSD, and you're rewarded with a lifetime of mental health issues and the bare minimum the NCR is willing to pay you for what you did that you probably didn't need to do in the first place. I really mean that last part. I killed a lot of people for no reason. At one point, it actually started to bother me, but we'll get there. On the road to Portland, Oregon, where this mod takes place, I experienced a first-hand flashback to the fight between the NCR and the Brotherhood of Steel at Helios 1. There's a lot of story exposition that happens here. For now, all I'll say about the voice acting is that it's not bad, it's just that you can tell this is a fan-made mod. Some are pretty good, like General Blackthorn, but others are too over-the-top or just don't feel like they fit. You know, I, I think when I get back, I'm gonna ask that girl to marry me. I even bought this here ring for her. So, you know, might as well go for it, you know what I mean? All right, Nomad. Taking the plunge. Holy shit. That must have cost you a year of salary. Not long later, the real game began in the form of a firefight that already blows anything New Vegas had out of the water. Sucked that it was at night though. Tough to see. I might be a pussy, but I ain't no cat. The Brotherhood soldiers took several shots to kill on easy. One guy fell over and didn't bring his life alert button from home. I put the old boy down, entered Helios 1, went back outside, and was instructed to put down the severely injured soldiers. I won't lie, I was heartbroken that I had no option to be enthusiastic about killing all the soldiers. You can probably guess where this went. I started with one who was really hurt, gradually migrated over to those who might be injured, and eventually just started killing every living person I saw. This is a flashback. They were supposed to die. Whatever happened was always supposed to happen. The universe decided that they must go, and that I must be their uber driver to the afterlife. As a punishment for make-believe crimes, I was on the receiving end of a one minute long panning shot that I could have skipped but didn't. 
without any music playing, I stopped the in-game music a while ago, it was boring as hell to watch. General Oliver, with a different voice, promised to give Grey Squad, he's the guy we were just playing as at Helios 1, their freedom as a reward for waging war against the Brotherhood. Fools. All of them. Once you're the government's property, they never let you go. There was a really weird looking cutscene with Blackthorn and some other guy discussing breaking off from the NCR and going to the frontier. And I died. I have no idea what caused it. I died the instant the load ended. So you cannot beat Fallout the Frontier without taking any damage. I enabled God Mode, absorbed the pain, pushed it all aside because I'm planning on losing my mind when I'm in my early 30s, I'm really looking forward to it, and continued onward. No I didn't, I could never lie to you. I went back to the bus and skipped the flashback. This game's Lyle Thompson instructed me to report to who I'd be reporting to. There was a logo, and chapter 1 begins with me tracking down the asshole who stole the truck. Inside the hangar, I went on a little shopping spree with the girls to check out what fun weapon of mass destruction this man chiseled out of stone would offer us. Met Hardcase and started to realize that this mod goes so far overboard with how legendary the courier is that the horse it was beating isn't even dead anymore. It's a f***ing fossil being burned in a factory in Detroit somewhere. It was time for me to run the shooting course and nothing says shooting course like being pelted with ping pong balls until you die. The worst part is sometimes they don't kill you. Sometimes they make you go all wobbly. The mines aren't real. Then I noticed that I had fucking claws. Unfortunately for me, and for you to an extent, the audio I thought was recording through my IMAX microphone was not recording. I wanted to put my reaction to certain things in the mod in the video like when I discovered I could abduct children in Skyrim. Thought it would be a fun addition to videos at certain points, but it wasn't meant to be. I finished the contest and was flabbergasted by my time compared to the others. Our first job is to plant landmines on a bridge to stop the Legion from invading. I had to follow Captain Henderson all the way there, which took forever. We stopped and had ourselves a merry little execution of some prisoners of war on the way there, and had to protect the armored bear from rooftop role-playing gamer guys trying to blow little bear's limbs off. You can repair the bear with a long electrocution probing device. The majority of this is not very interesting to watch. I picked off Legion guys when I could, looted their bodies for ammo and toys, and the tank and everyone else did most of the work. There was one spot that gave me trouble, only because an ambush doesn't trigger unless you get to a certain spot and it's difficult to get to cover without taking damage. I landed some very impressive long range shots with a squirt gun, took control of a howitzer, blew all the bad guys away, had a hell of a time trying to escape the thing only to realize it was the space bar that did it, the one button I didn't press, and we arrived at East Portland Metro. With nobody in sight, I set off a fire alert to alert anyone in a 7 mile radius that were here and were ready to party. Met up with some other guys who were on fire for some reason, and we began laying our mines. One guy blows up, it's a mess, there's another ambush, and I barely made it to cover without dying any more than 8 times. More than that would have been embarrassing. With no reinforcements, our only option was to retreat. We did, but I didn't make it. I got captured by the Legion. I got tortured, not sure why the frame rate's choppy here, it didn't happen in game explained to the walrus that I would not comply with their requests. They brought in another soldier, and it got real interesting real quick. They cut off his arm. They cut off his leg. Still, we remained resolute in our resolve. He screamed for it to stop, but I held out for the both of us. We met in the middle with his ending and mine continuing on. Took damage during my walk of shame, couldn't do much about it besides give myself some health. You're supposed to be hurt here and there didn't seem like there would be a way around that. And I can finally toss something out of my bucket list because your boy just got crucified. Naturally, the NCR decided to send their most elite team on a suicide mission to rescue one guy. It's a part of the story, how the people at the top are so desperate for a way to win that they've convinced yourself, yourself, They've convinced themselves you're the hero who's going to save them, and everyone at the bottom doesn't buy it. Several seconds into the mission, and I'm already dead. The bird takes a hit, and damage is unavoidable, lest ye want your body to be frozen in fear as it soars through the sky. This mod does get a little graphic at times. You never really see someone with their limbs missing while still being alive in the base game. Our objective now is to rescue the courier. And let me tell you what a colossal pain in the ass cluster of an adventure that was. We're so deep in Legion territory, we can practically jump rope with their intestines. They have automatic weapons. We're out in the open for the most part. They can pop up from seemingly nowhere. I have no long range weapons. 
and they're not quick to kill. The grenade launcher I had was a fantastic tool to fall back on, but it ain't meant for leaning. Rely on it too much and it'll fail ye. Keep in mind I am not the courier, so all my weapon stats are at 100, my special stats are different, and I have different perks and traits. The few things working over time for my advantage and little pay was how much ammo I had from my main gun. I had a pair of special bino clears that let me call in better and better reinforcements and airstrikes as I took out more AA guns. And I had a team of essential companions that cannot die, meaning I could mix up strategies, try attacking from far away and up close, all the while my team would carry me to safety. In the deep of the city, it got more complicated with legion bases on the corner of every block. I started relying more heavily on the bino clears here than I did early on, at least until I got a sniper rifle and could start being effective from a much longer range. On the other side of a legion trench, I had my first crash. Back in the game, it was broken to f***ing hell. I called in an artillery strike, and instead of turning my enemies into screaming piles of goo, they had an interpretive dance class in the sky. Had to reload a save from a good while ago to fix that, and eventually, we arrived at the Tower of the Courier. Moloch the Slow greeted me at the top of the tower, gave me no option to convince him to let the courier go. Combat instigated that way resulted in my immediate demise, so I had to get creative. Call in reinforcements up to the rooftop where he is, call in a napalm strike, and call in a carpet bombing all at once. Then, because he won't take damage just from those alone, shoot him once to piss him off just before the world ends again on him. Amazingly, despite the bombardment itself not killing him, he died, and the Lord decreed that wood is now imaginary. The wood platforms just don't work for me anymore. It's one of the weirdest bugs I've ever experienced in any game. I became my own knight in shining armor, and nearly contemplated ending it all in the time it took me to destroy this Legion tank. I was given a rocket launcher that's a one-time use sort of thing, and I couldn't tell if my shots were doing damage or if it just took multiple shots to destroy the tank. Eventually, we got to the extraction point. I got caught in an eye candy sandwich between myself and another man. The other ship got shot down, and I, still not the courier, went with Hotshot to rescue them. The game fell apart hard here. This is the part where you hopelessly hold off against waves and waves of enemies. I still had my health set to 1, I didn't have god mode enabled, and yet my limbs could be crippled. I even enabled, then disabled god mode, just to make sure it wasn't active. My AP was all sorts of f***ed up but I don't think it had anything to do with my health. Later on, I noticed demigod mode being automatically enabled by the game within the console command. You'll see what I mean when I get there. I couldn't take damage here because my health was at 100%. One of one. And because you're not supposed to die here as it triggers a cutscene, my health can't go any lower because zero of one is death, and there are no decimals. That's my guess anyway. Unfortunately, we didn't make it. None of us. This was the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. I get what they're going for. I do. It's just dumb as hell to see someone take 100 shots and then slowly collapse. The courier made it out. The Legion gave me the Beecher treatment by breaking both my legs and arms. I survived, bartered a bit, and got my next job, recovering the rotting corpses of my fallen comrades. This was very stressful, but I really enjoyed it. There were snipers sitting on the rooftops all over, and they weren't 100% accurate. I could sit out there and listen to where the bullets hit on the wall behind me and try to figure out where they were coming from. Found it pretty odd how rescuing the bodies is literally ripping them off the sticks and stuffing them in your pocket, but do you see any pockets on me? There was a funeral. I told everyone their friends died for nothing. Don't think they cared too much for that. I shot the boxes, met Blackthorn down in the super secret basement, and was introduced formally to the Liberator. I struggled to figure out what it was at first. Again, I wish I had my reaction to it because for a while there, I was 100% certain it's a train. It's an airship that was left untouched after the war, and they want me to help. It's bigger up close than it is at a distance. You know, like a ship. Now's not the time for the future. Now is the time for dying for so many of our men, most likely those under my command because I'm driving the tank. This was one of the most disappointing experiences of my entire life. I can only properly compare it to me being drunk on Discord and having numerous people convince me to make Cooking with Mitten Squad Episode 2, but it's just me getting takeout that's left at my door. Why was that disappointing? Because after Bobby and his bitch-ass Ford Fiesta abandoned my Taco Bell order, which happened after I missed a phone call from him because I didn't recognize the area code, after all that, I ordered burgers. It was disappointing because I rambled for 7 minutes, go down the stairs, you know what, it's easier just to play it. First, uh, 
What was that guy's name? Bobby? First he ditches my order. I want a Taco Bell. Left at the door. Ooh, here we go. What an adventure we're about to go on together. Here we go. I can inspect the bugs. I have a bug problem. There's a lot of bugs. There's an echo down here because the ceiling goes all the way up there. That's at least a foot away. There was no knock at the door. Let's go. I should turn off this light. People can see, see me. I'm wearing my mitten squat sweater. And he left it at the wrong place. Fucking delightful. It took me 30 minutes and three phone calls to get my food because I'm too much of a pussy to go outside at 10 o'clock at night while drunk in a Christmas sweater after New Year's to steal my own food off one of my neighbor's doorsteps. The tank thing? Yeah, it's just so bland and boring. Your rifle has infinite ammo and shares an approximate crosshair with the tank. There's no reason to not be constantly firing at all times. You physically can't take damage, only the tank can, and there's no way to change that and your tank repairs itself automatically. Here's the demigod thing I was talking about earlier, with it showing up in the console commands. I'm gonna skip the rest of the tank section because there's really nothing to it. Also, the controls are janky as f which is fine. I can tolerate it in this because Bethesda had to do voodoo magic to even simulate a moving vehicle in Fallout 3. Then a laser from the sky blasted us. Everyone's least favorite enemy is back, the Enclave. Boss man told me where my car was waiting for me. I forgot immediately, never found it, and never drove another car again unless I was forced to. I met up with Officer Parks south of somewhere and began infiltrating the Enclave base. To do that, we'd need wheels. Like I said, the driving controls suck. I despise them, at least for this part of the game. You need to use a boost to make several jumps, and you need to hit it at just the right time and just the right angle and the right boost to land it. I f***ed that up, but I'm not saying it again. But again, phenomenal job by the developers of this mod. As bad as I think it is, it's still far better than it should be. My job is to infiltrate the base. I was given 5 advanced stealth boys and a silenced 12.7mm pistol. There's also a guy watching my back who can insta-kill people if I get close to them and press Z. At least I'm maybe 60% sure that's what happened. You've gotta hack four terminals to shut down the electromagnetic fence. It's a lot of stealth gameplay which is basically the same thing over and over again. Shoot someone, move to stay hidden, shoot someone else, rinse, lather, repeat. With the defenses down, our big boys stormed the castle. I investigated the mysterious winged creature, went inside, got killed by an old man had to take some damage there to proceed, and nanorobot machines were sent to kill us all. They're not done quite as well as synths, and their armor is bright so it feels more like fighting robots from the future than fighting living sentient creatures from the future. So, like, we're going into space. But to get there, they need two simple things. Two rechargeable sextuple A batteries, and it's gonna be a hell of a job to get them both. I got 5,000 caps for my work, then got back to work. Shades and I met up at Junk Rat, Junkyard, Jump Heap, something like that. Ghoul Boy acted real cool by telling us about a drunk guy from the Enclave. Shades finally let me off my chain. I immediately went on a shopping spree, went to meet my contact, and got mugged by a lowlife and his son. I let them mug me, then I killed them both, looted their bodies, dropped them down into the sewage to become one with Meltman, and met the poor dude who went and lost his arms. They got stolen by skeevers. Naturally, me being the nice man I am, I went and wiped out the entire rat population of the Portland sewer system. It was biblical. Didn't find the arm though, considered killing the guy for lying to me, and had to shoot a kid. Let me explain. He asks you for money. If you don't pay up, he throws rocks at you, and a rock is enough to kill me. I know because it happened. The only way to avoid violence is to pay 100 caps, or put some buckshot in his skull. With a bunch of drinks inside Carl, I'd like to think this could have been the real Carl Weezer. He explained to me where to find the batteries. One's in a church beneath the surface of the earth run by ghouls called the Church of Eternal Life, and the other is with a group of hunters living in the Hunter's Lodge, both on opposite ends of the map. 3,700 words in, still not even one half of the way through this, sound the alarm, it's time for a lightning round. Both of these are a f***ing ordeal to play through. 
They're great and they're fun quest lines. The Gould one especially is one of my favorites from the entire mod, but they're not related to the main story. They're forced side attractions and will be treated as such. On my way to one of them, I got distracted by a hotel filled with the adorable remains of a bloodbath, and I needed answers. Inside were warheads, slavers, spiders, and gore galore. I killed Dutch because I really wanted his armor. I should have said tried to kill Dutch because he had other ideas. Content with failure, I went down to the panic room to kill the frost lion. He looked a little better after I was done with him, spoke to his chained whore, shot her food, took her grenades, and set off for the ghoul hole. When dingoes are out in this field, they're tough as something that's usually pretty tough, but are slow and have no ranged attacks. Spoiler alert, to get the power cell from the cult, you must join the cult. Step 1 to joining any cult is to murder the enforcer at the door. Step 2 is to convince the high priest to let you join. The high priest is a glowing one. Insult him, tell the other priest the high guy vouched for you, you're in. Step 3. Sit in the ooze for 30 seconds. And herein lies the issue. I cannot take damage. When radiation damage passes 250 rads, I take damage and die. I didn't have enough rad away or rad X to survive for 30 seconds. Rather than leaving and getting more, I used all I had, used god mode again, sat there, returned to the big man, and my last quest before I can become a full-fledged maniac is to get a final blessing from Ghoul Jesus. This is the kind of thing that seems great when you're really high, and is equally as great when you're not. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but Ghoul Jesus is a Karen. He gives you an autograph and says he met you. Killing him does not let you wear the wig. I return to the priest got the power core, decided to kill the priest because I wanted his robes. That was after I killed the high priest, but before I wiped out half the ghouls and their flock. What I really did was make their faith stronger. Those close to the nuclear war had survived. The others who strayed too far paid the price for that. Next one, just a nightmare to get there to begin with. I killed a horde of f***ing dinosaurs, how do you think it went? The Hunter's Lodge is where the big toddlers play when they grow out of the ball pit. They let animals loose, you hunt them, the last one's you. Shocker. They take all your weapons, leave supplies scattered around the battlefield, and to complete the quest, you have to kill them all. Tricky to do when you can't take damage, but not impassable. A brick to the dome does more damage than you'd think. One guy only uses a spear, the dogs die in one shot, and it's really just the last guy you've gotta worry about because he's got a stealth boy and a harpoon gun. But even then, you don't have to worry too much because he is dreadfully inaccurate. Bevins rewards you with the mansion and with both power cores. I returned to Blackthorn, tried to kill everyone just because I kinda had to. Not a single one of them can die. Blackthorn gave me a rundown on the group. There's engineers, and pilots, and soldiers, and doctors, and hackers, and comms guy, and the leader, and me. When this happened, the only thing I could think of was that family guy scene with the T-Rex and the astronaut costume, but when I went to look for it, I couldn't find it. Maybe I'm just losing my mind. Regardless, we're legit going into outer space now. Tiger and Caboose immediately got sucked out into space after we arrived at the station. I should point out that this is an enclave space station, and they've got some very sci-fi enemies here that I'm not overly fond of. Dip me spent a solid five minutes trying to figure out how to open the energy barrier before finding a simple switch. We learned of Argus. The gun from Black Ops 3 never got nerfed, and eventually took over an entire space station. At this point, I got this 12.7mm revolver that is stupid powerful. Better than the Gauss rifle or my sniper rifle, or anything I have except explosive weapons. Tram stopped, me and Roach get out to investigate, the tram runs him over. It's great. Then we split off into two groups. There's me, and those I plan on getting killed who will go left and those I also plan on getting killed will go right. These stupid children took off their masks after we got to the station. I never did. That's why one of them turned into Laffy Taffy and had to be put down. Now we're at the spooky ship part of the game. An evil AI doesn't like us and is pulling a dead space. Not that that's a bad thing. You have no objective marker, you just explore and figure out where to go on your own. At one point we got stuck in the five quadrants room as it filled with fog and husks. A husk is what you turn into if you're outside when the sun goes down and the air fills with dusk. There was another ambush in the next room. I, of course, hid in a crate the entire time. They pulled a Far Cry 3 and got demonic with their visions. Lovely. I'm a lobotomite now, and I'm trapped in a maze with maniacs who won't hesitate to punch me right in the sensitive part of my entire body. After following the red arrows and finding a key, 
I glitched through the wall and used that glitch to borderline cheat my way into the blue arrow room. Escaped the maze. I'm in the chamber of bottomless torment. I escaped it easily though. There was an earthquake and there's a boss fight. Let me tell you about this boss fight. There are four giant psycho monsters throwing explosive spears at you from four directions at once. How in the sweet f am I supposed to dodge four attacks at once when, in the best case scenario, I can see maybe two of those? Answer is, I didn't. I gave myself some amount of health and did the boss fight proper. If they miss wildly with their spear, it lands on the ground. You pick it up, throw it back at all four, then a melee guy shows up. Bop him a couple times, back to the four playground bullies again, do it a few times, and the boss fight is over. If it seems like I'm not very enthusiastic about this entire thing, the boss fight, it's because I'm not. The cyber husk was defeated. We all woke up in a cage. The good doctor revealed himself. We all get squished. I tried to put everyone out of their misery, but I got the timing off. Got squished for real, and had to choose who to let die. Siren, or Doyle. He looks like a Doyle. I let Siren die. It was a good scream. Not long and wailing enough, but solid nonetheless. Doyle and Skinless caused a distraction. I blew open a wall with a gas tank, got blown out into space, miraculously survived, and marveled at the space around me. We made it back to the station just in time for God to decide 2021 has been too good to me. It's time for pain. So many laser turrets shooting from all over, several Argus soldiers which are just like walking tanks, and the low gravity is more of a hindrance than not. Turrets go down easy, like a split second, soldiers not so much. And because you're in the vacuum, you can't just use any weapon. It's only this, and it's got a really limited range. Aiming down the sights is an abomination, the scope at the top isn't real, it's just sh then you get to pretend to be 4 year old Paul by smashing all the rocks in the world. If the rocks hit you back, it's game over for you. It's ambitious, the number of new gameplay mechanics they tried to add into the game, it's just unfortunate that I don't care for most of them. Back inside the ship, I got murdered by gravity, thought I was being really brave by stepping on the floor that was probably going to cause damage, it didn't, I just went into convulsions instead no biggie. Seeing signs of potential future hostility if the creatures don't care for my coming actions, I lit the plants ablaze to test my hypothesis. It didn't work out, so I killed the gardeners. Used the turret to mindlessly kill nanobots that won't fight back, reunited with Parks, tried to prank these two lobotomites by shoving one into the other's pod, so when they wake up they'd be in the same pod. Didn't work out, accidentally knocked out one with a candle launcher. I think we flew too close to the sun with that one. We rescued Rogue. Watchman greeted us in the doorway with some fresh invisible ink on his face. I killed him. Parks commented on how it was probably the right thing to do. Naturally, I tried to clip around him to let him live. Couldn't do it, I'm sorry to say. Step out of it, Watchman. We're too late. He's already gone. Yeah, I already killed him. Idiot. Found Turner playing with his computer, we regrouped at the tram. I took off my space suit, and I'm assuming that's what gave me the ability to jump so high. No console commands did it. We've one last test, and it's the worst part of the game. We spent 25 minutes in this room. You're supposed to survive wave after wave of enemies, but they only send like 5 or 5 at you at a time, and remember there are 4 other people on your team who cannot die. Halfway through I couldn't wait for it to be over. To get deeper into the space station, I used my mag boots to climb a wall into a giant GTA 5 racing tunnel fit with all the hazards. Avoid the fan blades and the lasers. The fans have no trick, but the lasers are easy. You just walk forwards and to one direction until you line up with the opening in the grid. Keep moving in that opening until you're through. Then crouch to get through one because this entire thing is bullshit. Big bad doctor guy sent a heavily modified siren out to face me for my final final test. Once again, this mod manages to one-up itself. The last boss was four bosses at once. This one is one boss with the speed of four. It should be obvious how impossible it would be for me to avoid damage during this fight with how fast she moves and how fast her projectiles move. Gave myself a bit of health. She started draining my stats. I whipped out a grenade launcher and fired grenade after grenade after missile after missile at her until she fell before me. God would never allow me to be a Power Ranger. The body vanished. I took out a room full of stationary androids as I expected something was amiss. Activated the elevator for my friends. A baker's half dozen police roly polies came to life 
safe inside the computer lab. It took one of my few remaining stealth boys and my silenced weapon to best them, but what came next was far worse than anything I've faced so far. Nearly every tube in this room is filled with a person, and they all come to life to kill me. First it's one, then it's one more, then it's two, then two more, then four, and before long, you're facing an entire army. This would be so very possible if I had more than one health. With that hindrance, I carefully considered my options. Because they only use their fists, at first I thought I could be efficient enough with a shotgun to kill them as they came. Same goes for the Lancer, that's a powerful gun I'd been sitting on. It was good, but not good enough. Eventually, out of ideas, I sat in the corner to collect my thoughts. My solution was beautiful. One drug to increase damage one to slow down time, and a machine gun is all it takes to wipe them all out in seconds. The android security are not very fun to fight. There's little to no room for mistakes. If you don't nail them with a single shot that kills them, you're dead. Soon enough, I found Edmund an enclave soldier who really didn't want to die. He coughed up a bit of information about Argus and how I could shut it down. I've got to track down Voss, the head biology guy who's got the shutdown codes. Freak Show went and got himself injured. I didn't have enough band-aids to share with the entire class, so I chose to save them all for myself. Tuner went insane and locked himself in the control chamber. I had to dive into the drink to remove the fusion cores from their bath. Tuner had his mind melted from the inside out. I killed him because siding with him and helping Argus to take over the Earth wasn't an option. Finally, I spoke to Argus. Basically, he wants to reshape life to be pure. He's got some special gas that will expunge all foulness from the Earth and its inhabitants, allowing him to start life over again. Then, another boss fight. It's multifaceted and just as ridiculously convoluted as everything else. Defeat a wave of enemies, grab one of the fusion cores from the water, throw it into the lava lamp to cover it in electricity, then throw it back into the water to fry his soul. But the catch is, there's a spinning laser pointer on the merry-go-round that is the brain. Each time it goes faster, he sends more enemies in each wave, and the platforms rise and fall around him to make it more and more difficult to both get to the water and get the fusion core out. Rather than letting technology fall into the wrong hands, our noble hero chose to sacrifice the base in order to ensure humanity's complete annihilation. The only one who can stop the meltdown is quite unhelpful, a borderline burden, and is not here at the moment. Luckily, I have Officer Parks here, and he's willing to enter the machine under my command to take one for the team. His death had a rippling effect on the fabric of the universe. The game came crumbling to a crawl. Restarting fixed the issue. I made sure to put on my Sunday best and followed Badger to a secret door. Inside the president's office, I snagged the gold-plated magnum rifle that does a f***ing absurd 111 damage per shot. For comparison, the anti-material rifle does 110 damage per shot. The secret to the entire base is the Sea Finder, a tool used to control Archimedes 3. Two? No, I'm pretty sure it's three. Dr. Voss managed to escape our grasp one time, but it's okay, I'm a natural when it comes to video game mechanics. I was born to fly. Just as bad, if not worse, than the tank section. Actually, it's worse. There's no indicator of any kind if you're doing damage. There's no crosshair. Despite the meteoroids and two spacecraft, I never felt like I was actually in space. Voss's ship turned into confetti alongside the Sea Finder. We casually returned to the surface of the Earth as if nothing had happened. I leveled up took the Explorer perk for my own convenience, and now that the Enclave has been dealt with, it's time to resume the war with the Legion. Part of me thought this was the end of the NCR story. Blackthorn basically says, you've already done enough, but if you're still alive after all the suicide missions we've sent you on, we could probably find something for you to do. Wei, the assistant, was impressed at how I single-handedly took down an entire Enclave spaceship then immediately said that what work he had was beyond me. The Sea Finder managed to survive the fall to Earth, and guess who's going to find it? It's in Ostia, a pre-war museum, that now just so happens to be at the epicenter of the Legion stronghold in the frontier. The NCR forces will engage the Legion to draw out their forces while I sneak inside and find the Sea Finder. While looking for the armory to resupply before my mission, a doctor begged me to help with his patient. I made cookies when I was a kid, I'm more than prepared to be a doctor assistant. All I had to do was hand him tools as he called them out. I also tried waiting and giving him nothing to see if the patient dies, and he doesn't. He sure as died when I exploded his noggin though. Then I killed the doctor and everyone else asleep in the bunks. Kinda felt bad about it. Reloaded a save, finished the operation, bought all the ammo I could, had my weapons repaired, and set off for the Legion base. I had an outfit to get me inside the first base. 
but I'd have to improvise to get through the next two gates. Spoiler alert, it all fell apart here. Normally, in a Fallout game, you'd kill a guard, take their uniform, put it on, sneak into enemy territory, and nobody bats an eye. Here, the instant you enter enemy territory, whether you have a Legion uniform or not, everyone instantly becomes hostile. This part with the fallen tree perfectly encapsulates everything I've said. I killed both guards without being detected, stepped onto the rooftop, and everyone lost their minds. I don't know if there's a way to stealth your way in. Probably should have tried it. I didn't try talking to too many Legion folk before I decided to go in guns blazing. It's always a foolproof fallback plan. It's only let me down just about every time. Inside was tolerable. It felt more like a Skyrim location than Fallout, but that's a forgivable crime, unlike loitering. My tactic for dealing with those loitering outside was swift and beautiful. If I attack one person, they all attack me back. Friendship is a wonderful thing, but if you throw a grenade with a rifle then immediately turn around and go back inside, people will take damage, but you'll be safely ensconced in the loving arms of a cold as f building and stale food. It took me more than 20 minutes to kill every Legion soldier lurking around the campsite and watching from the towers. I even had to get creative with my use of handheld explosives to systematically melt the frame of a legionary. Back indoors, I massacred a dinner party, killed a few torturers, they weren't willing to let me join in on the fun, so I did anyway. I used my most powerful weapon to finally end Legate Valerius. Someone else finished the job. I got the Sea Finder, escaped through a waterfall, convinced a AJ to join me, an NCR trooper rescued us with a car, and we had to flee to the safety of an NCR base. Maybe you can tell by where you are in the video that something funky happened here. I'll explain. I got tired of this mod. Like I've said, driving is as great as it possibly could be in Fallout New Vegas, but I still really don't like it. I'm constantly taking damage from people shooting at me and the Legion artillery fire. Staying under the overpass is impossible, and I run out of fuel before I make any real progress. And because I'm me, I ignored driving, and now I have no extra fuel to power the car. But the mission is to drive the car to safety. They say that the NCR questline is about 30 hours long, and I was only about 14 hours into the playthrough. Generally, I try to avoid anything that's gonna be longer than 12 hours because it's gonna be a motherfucker to turn into a video. If we're only halfway through this, it would mean the final video would be almost 70 minutes, and I have neither the time nor the energy to make a video that long unless it's a GTA 5 video. The Frontier, as a total package, Without a doubt, I would easily place in the upper echelon of Fallout New Vegas mods. Very few mods even come close to adding the amount of content that this one does, and it does most things pretty well despite everything I've bitched about. And that's where it ends. I did not beat Fallout the Frontier without taking any damage. I'm fairly certain that I proved it cannot be done due to scripted events and other forced sequences. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the champion tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server by going to mitten.land. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.